you know, I said earlier how I think that the practice is the most important part. And I think that's what really helped for me. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm a failed perfectionist. And um, I think that there was a long period of time where if it wasn't going to be good, if I wasn't going to write something good, then I wasn't going to write anything at all, which meant I could go for months without writing anything. And when I made that commitment to start writing every day, it allowed me to, I mean, I realized you're not going to write a masterpiece every day. You can't, that's, that's impossible. So it took a lot of pressure off and allowed me to, as William Stafford famously said, lower your standards. This is the best advice ever because you, you realize that you, you, there's so much freedom then. And the more free you are, the better you can write. Uh, there's, there's the paradox. And, and so I, um, I ended up coming up with a couple of rules for, for my every day. They kind of evolved out of it. The promises that I make every day is one, I will write Two, it doesn't have to be good, but it has to be true. And by true, I just mean authentic. I don't mean factual. I just can't be writing it because it sounds good. Um, I have to really kind of, it, it has to have juice and it has to have tug in it for me. Um, the third one is I can't know the ending when I start. And if I do, I have to write past it. Hmm. And, or I can cut it off and write a second ending or third. Um, and the last one is I will share. And I really do think that that sharing piece is very important. I think that, um, that we kind of breathe. <laughs> writing poems is like inhaling. It's like taking in the world, taking in the world, taking in the world. And at some point that's untenable, right? And you need to, there's a cycle involved in it. And, uh, and I also think that there's, I was just thinking about this earlier today, that there's a witnessing piece involved, that when somebody else reads the poem or hears the poem, it, it there's a, a seeing involved in that and a, a witnessing that, I don't know, it's, an, it's a glorious exchange that happens and I know it from both sides, what it feels like to be read and what it feels like to complete another person listening to them or reading them. Um, I just feel like it's a really important part of the process. So the blog evolved out then of, you know, enough people, I was sending it out to, a, you know, 50 and then 100 and then 150. Then I was getting, you know, marked as a spammer. So I started putting them on a blog uh, so that I wouldn't be a spammer anymore, poetry spammer. And I think that the, I think it's kind of stupid, really, to put a first draft into the world every day because you're putting a first draft into the world. Uh, and sometimes they take off before they have wings, maybe. But I also think that that really reflects what I've chosen as a priority, which is to show up in a daily way and to allow other people into this daily conversation and to, um, it, the publishing part has really fallen away from me. Do you want, it, do you want to go on to the other poem, Other Shoes from the... Yes, okay. we can do that one. This is just from a, maybe last week. Other Shoes. Oh, and it has a this little epigraph from Carlos Santana. I'm watching his masterclass, which by the way is fabulous. Oh my gosh. It's, it's, it's thrilling. Do you play guitar? Is it says, a guitar class? I don't play guitar. It is a guitar mm -hmm. class, but, but really it's a, it's a creative uh -huh. class. Like he really is talking about creative process and everything he's talking about. I think, yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. Of course I'm thinking with poetry, but oh, that's really cool. He says, uh, we all belong to the same galactic oneness. Other shoes. I could be the doctor who, overwhelmed in the ER, went home and killed herself. I could be the 16-year-old boy who had to cover his father with a white sheet before the coroner arrived. I could be the white sheet. I could be the lawmaker unable to sleep or her pillow that hears her cry out in fear when at last the sleep arrives, I could be the rhythmic hissing of the ventilator or the wail of the wife or the weary hum of the custodian beneath her mask as she wipes the surfaces clean. It could be me, the 11th death in the town next door to mine. It could be me, the one who unknowingly makes you sick because I don't know I carry something deadly inside my breath. And so I don't hug you when I see you across the post office lobby, though my heart leaps up to hold you 
because you could be the flat line on the EKG because you could be number 12. And that was a poem from Rosemary's blog, which of course you can find at 100fallingveils.com. And that's other shoes.